Vellum is an old-school pixel art adventure game made primarily by Micah Orsi with a small indie team. Funded by a successful Kickstarter campaign in 2013 after the first one failed, and released two years later. Dropsy is an old-school pixel art adventure game made primarily by Jay Tolan with a small indie team funded by a successful Kickstarter campaign in 2013 after the first one failed and released two years later. They came out four months apart. The titular alum is a guy in the Land of Tide whose wife has caught the strange, incurable plague that's been creeping across the city of Cosmos. Desperate to save her, he comes in contact with a group of rebel outsiders who claim to have a cure, but is criminalized for meeting with them, and has to escape the city, leaving his wife behind. He discovers the cure is being kept from the citizens of Cosmos, joins with the rebels, and after a convoluted series of missions, they break back into the city to free its people from the powers that control it. Though Alum dies in the battle, he manages to get the cure to his wife first, and she joins the rebels in their mission to bring the cure to other cities in his honor. The titular Dropsy is a weird clown man with no hands, very few teeth, and though he can speak to animals, he can't speak to humans, even if he does mostly understand them. One day his dad takes sick, and having no money for medical care, and not many friends because everybody thinks he's creepy, Dropsy shall we say, acquires a miracle pill from a local factory, drawing the attention of the company CEO. CEO decides to help out Dropsy's dad, give Dropsy a job, let Dropsy headline a new circus show. But psych! It was all a trick. CEO and Dropsy are actually long-lost brothers, and they're both aliens who landed on Earth as babies, and CEO steals the pod Dropsy landed in to open a portal back home. Dropsy follows him there, gets shot, but then is rescued by a spaceship with his birth mom on it. So aside from the obvious, what do these two games have to do with each other? Well, sorry for burying the lead, but they're both, um, they're both about Jesus? So this is stepping outside of my wheelhouse, because though I was raised Methodist, I am no longer religious. Like, at all. And any opinion I express on how these games tangle with Christianity can probably be written off with, well you're not a believer. Which, fair enough. But I am fascinated by religion, and I do find it meaningful even in my non-participatory way. And I spent some time talking these two games over with my friend Eileen, who's a really cool reverend. So I kind of want to look from an outside perspective on how two games in the same genre, from similar developers with similar backgrounds about very similar subjects, can have two wildly different ideas about what loving Jesus means. So the disease Alum's wife Esther has caught isn't a physical ailment. It's a psychological emptiness. People stop talking, stop participating, stop caring about life. They call it the vague. And the cure Alum finds comes in the form of a rushlight, a liquid-filled pendant this monk dude named Symmetry lends him. And after drinking from it, Alum communes with an omniscient being of light and love who fills his heart with peace. Like you do and is now vaccinated against the vague and given his own rushlight which he may allow others to drink from. So the cure to the vague is God, or the unfeigned altruist. And the ruler of Cosmos has made a pact with this universe's version of the devil to keep rushlights out of the city. So the plot is about the rebel's quest to bring God to the people of Cosmos. Design is 90s classical, inventory puzzles and fetch quests. There's a part where you need to collect a shield that's part of this controller because in this game you pilot an ancient mech for Jesus! And this girl knows she has it, but her brother's the one who knows where it is, and he's been captured by an ice giant, so you solve this puzzle where you use artificial wings to leap into the giant's pouch and free the brother from a magical cage by reciting the incantation you learned from getting the giant drunk, and then you escape through a hole you opened by pulling a loose thread, and then the brother gives you the shield. Adventure games. There's also arcade sequences and cheap deaths, so it's clearly made by Sierra fans. And the religiosity is everywhere. Aside from the obvious plot bits, the rebels are called the Rogations, and the mech is called the Dunamis, and it resides at Mount Hesed. It's not subtle. So it's a little weird that near as I can tell, nowhere in the Kickstarter, the marketing, or the smattering of articles and interviews did Micah Orsi ever mention he was making a religious game. A Dropsy doesn't pitch itself as religious either, but it feels a lot less tricksy about it. Where Alum is very much a Christian game, Dropsy is more a game made by a Christian. 
There are Christian themes, and certainly the ending where Dropsy is publicly brought low, dies, and then ascends is pretty on the nose, but it's at least as much a riff on Superman as it is on Jesus. Now, Superman is already kind of Jesus-y, being a messianic figure who descends from the heavens but is raised as a man, and writers have never been above pointing this out. But Dropsy's central hook is, what if Superman, but powerless? Like, what if the man from space landed outside a circus instead of a farmhouse and was brought up as this creepy clown guy who talks to squirrels? Not a savior, no superpowers, but embodying the same pre-Snyder kindness and goodness of Superman. Now, choosing to focus on Jesus the man as opposed to Jesus the son of God is kind of like saying Clark Kent is more interesting than Superman, but whatever, it worked for Lord Andy. And Dropsy is just good. He's a good dude. Most of the gameplay is finding people who are unhappy and figuring out what would make them feel better. This can be as simple as giving a girl a flower or a guy a rare album, or as meaningful as reuniting estranged family members or getting a pastor to open a shelter for the homeless. And what's interesting is most of these things don't actually advance the plot. Some of them do and some of them don't, and you don't know which is which. Sometimes you get a plot-critical inventory object. Mostly you just get a hug. Oh uh, yeah, by the way, this is a game where one of your dedicated verbs is hug. You hug people, you hug animals, you hug inanimate objects. And you can read Christianity into that as well. Dropsy heals people by putting his hands on them, or his arms. But I like that Dropsy doesn't hug anyone before they want to be hugged, and if they're not huggers, he's happy to fist bump, or just wig out with them if that's their speed. Now, adventure game puzzles tend to be very transactional. Like most adventure games, you do a lot of good turns for people, but it's always to get something in return, even when you don't know what. There's a reason pirates and outlaws make for good adventure game protagonists. Mechanically, doing a favor in exchange for an inventory item and stealing the item are the same thing. Except in cases where the narrative expressly questions the ethics of your behavior, anything that advances the plot is good, or at least morally neutral. It's solving a puzzle. It's progressing towards the win state. There was this bit in Kathy Rain that required me to taser a homeless man, the ethics of which were never questioned. And it was a pretty clever puzzle solution, but also, what the flip, Kathy? And Alum is similarly transactional. You do a number of good deeds, but only on the promise that you will be rewarded. You literally rescue a child from being burned alive by a cult, but only after his dad promises if you do it, he'll give you some cheese. By not letting you know what will or won't progress the story, Dropsy encourages and quietly requires you to do good things for their own sake, not to get something back. Good deeds are gameplay. They're fun. Do enough and you'll stumble on the key to the next area, but that's not why you do it. You do it because all you have to go on is one mental list of unhappy people and one of things that will make them happy. And the rest just kind of sorts itself out. This is slightly but not completely undercut by the Steam version given you Chivos. And this is really the crux differentiating Alum from Dropsy. Dropsy is a game about the philosophy of Christ, where Alum is about the Church of Christ. Dropsy does a few things of questionable ethics. I got that rare album by stealing it off a guy's wall, and I totally narked on the guy selling bootleg video games because it would make the cop happy. But it's framed as Dropsy acting in innocence. He doesn't respect personal property because he doesn't understand it. Overall, he still embodies a Christian philosophy of grace and charity. But Alum has no such philosophy. He definitely understands personal property, but he still steals from people, even his allies. He drugs a frost giant's food without his knowledge, and then later chops his head off. Dropsy embodies a Christian ideal and can even attend church, but he also hangs out with this commune of Thor-worshipping homesteaders, and he treats them with equal love and respect. In Alum, you bash a member of a competing religion over the head with a pipe and steal his robes at a time when them being kidnappers is still just a rumor. Besides, if you're stealing children, you needed that. If is doing a lot of work in that sentence, Alum. The game is just kind of horny for holy war. It's got sniper mini games and bombings and murder, but so long as it's done in the altruist's name, it's moral. And the altruist has no ethos, makes no commandments. The only thing the altruist asks is for you to make more Christians. 
So the altruist is God, and Alum is an adult who converts to the faith and promises to bring it to others, so he's kind of a Paul the Apostle type. And do you notice what's missing? This is a Jesus game with no Jesus in it. I mean, in the end credits, Orsi says Jesus Christ is the unfeigned altruist, but I don't buy it. However you look at Jesus, as a rabbi teaching a gospel of gentleness, a pacifist radical socialist disrupting the political order, or a holy martyr sacrificing himself so that we may be saved, the unfeigned altruist is none of that. If he's Jesus, he's Jesus after ascending, where he's functionally interchangeable with the Holy Father, an Old Testament omnipotent God with a peace and love rebrand. The closest analog to Jesus is the rushlight, an inanimate object used as a conduit to God. It says nothing, it asks nothing of you, but it's your job to bring it to others by any means necessary. Where Dropsy doesn't have a god. I, I mean, not as an NPC. Or an apostle. All it has is the Jesus of the Gospels. And that's only kind of accurate. Despite the parallels, Dropsy is less a stand-in for Jesus than a man following Jesus' path, even if he's not aware that's what he's doing. With the makeup and general oddness, he's kind of a holy fool, or a cast member in Godspell. Now I'm heaping praise on the one and criticizing the other, but I don't want to be too one-sided here. I think there are limits to Dropsy's philosophy that the game doesn't really tangle with, and while I don't agree with the perspective of Alum, the feeling that the world is going to heck and that it's a moral imperative to spread the philosophy that can help? Yeah, I get it. And it really goes to show just how malleable religion is. These nearly opposite stories are, in a way, based on the same book. But one is interested in Jesus primarily as a means to an end that I am not seeking. I've no doubt Orsi loves this vision of God, but I can't take much meaning from it. I am not in the choir to which he preaches. Also, the biblical Esther was hardcore, and naming a character with no agency after her is fricked up. But the other tells a story that I find very powerful. It is interested in the aspects of Jesus that do have meaning to me. Granted, some Christians like to give credit to Jesus for things he was not the only nor the first to say, but that underlines my point, however you come to it. A philosophy of kindness is one I can get with. And I'm sure Jay Tolan and I could have an interesting conversation about whether you should be willing to get shot for it. I, for one, am not. But I think there's much we'd agree on. And, I mean, I try to practice a kind and humanist atheism. But there is also the misogynist, Islamophobic, maybe let's just fantasize about eugenics variety that I have no patience for. It's almost like there is no belief system under which people can't rationalize crappy behavior. And over that, I'll take a warm, damp hug any day.